The following is a production of Texas Lutheran University. For more information, please visit tlu.edu. We have the uh, pleasure today to uh, welcome one of our own uh, to give a seminar today, a, speak, a seminar talk today. Ms. Kimberly Watts will be the speaker. She's the director of the Career Development Office on campus. She has a Bachelor of Arts in Philosophy from Incarnate Word University in San Antonio. She then went on to earn her law degree. She has a doctor's jurisprudence, JD, mm -hmm. from the University of Texas at Austin, and uh, then went back to school and earned a uh, master's from the University of Texas in San Antonio in counseling. And uh, so we've been very pleased and fortunate to have her here at, on campus as our career development uh, person. And she's going to talk with you today quite a bit, I think, about careers and choices of careers and how to do all kinds of stuff like that. Yes, we're having a little bit of, there we go. Okay, awesome. Ms. Watts. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. There's some familiar faces in here and some not so familiar. So for those of you who've seen and heard my spiel before, I apologize if there's any repetition. I'll try not to. Um, but I might call on you as experts uh, to uh, sort of testify to some of the things that I'll be talking about. Um, Dr. Levens gave you some of my background. Part of the reason that I love my job is that there was no one doing this job when I went through school to help me figure out what I really wanted to be doing with my degree. Um, and so I love being able to give back in a way that I wish I had been advised and counseled when I was in school. Um, many of you have talents in a variety of areas and sometimes it's hard to choose which one should be your career track. Many of you in this room are probably thinking doctor, pharmacist, physical therapist, and I am another person among the many who are here to help you get there. Uh, I am also here to help you uh, understand what plan B's and other alternatives might be, should you be thinking of something else, or should plan A not come through in the immediate future, okay? So I hope your plan A does come through and we enable you to get there expediently, but if it doesn't, there's lots of other ways to make your plan happen, okay? So, <laughs> um, I'm gonna just move this aside. So we know about, of course, you guys are on the push to graduation. That's the main goal right now. And some of you are at the point where you're thinking about graduate school applications and interviews and that sort of thing. But <laughs> it may seem like the end, but that really is truly only just the beginning of your professional life. And if you start thinking you know, very strategically about it now, you're gonna make the whole process a lot more seamless for yourself. One of the things that happens is that we kind of get into undergrad, and I remember how it was. I just wanna be an undergrad right now. I wanna have fun and enjoy myself and make sure I get my grades that I need to get on to the next step, but I'm not really gonna think about that too much until maybe like research projects in the summer and graduate school applications are, you know, come and do and that kind of thing. But you really need, and it will do yourself a favor, if you start strategizing more now about what if the worst case scenario happens and I don't get what my first choice or what I really want to be doing? What am I going to do in the meantime to make myself a better applicant for the next time around? What are some other things that I may not even know exist that are options for me with a degree in the sciences? Okay, so this is some good news. May not seem that glamorous <laughs> as far as a starting salary, but certainly when compared to the other majors, this is the average starting salary for just folks with bachelor's degrees in the sciences, okay? Not even a master's, not an MBA or anything in addition. Um, and just to give you an idea, the only two other major areas that have higher salaries than that are computer science and engineering. And they're only a couple thousand higher, okay? So that gives you an idea of if you're gonna get a full-time job right out of school, kind of the ballpark that you'll be in, okay? Is that a surprise to anybody? Higher, lower than you thought? Oh, it's crickets in here, you guys. I know it's Friday and it's rainy, sleepy weather, but <laughs> I'm gonna fall asleep up here if you're not more interactive. That's another thing about me. I will call on you and ask questions back and forth, so please feel free to do the same, okay? Let's make this more of a comfort. Yes, Dr. Levin. What, what kind of uh, jobs are, are you talking about there with regard to science jobs? We'll get more into it in a second, but we're talking specifically maybe about lab technician jobs, clinical technician and assistant, x-ray tech kind of stuff, those sorts of entry level. Yes, ma'am. Does it really matter where you're looking for these jobs or are they out there and you just have to look for them? 
When you say where, do you mean location or do you mean type of company or organization? Location. Um, not really. You guys are kind of in what we call the catbird seat in that you have chosen a degree which is in what we call the STEM area, science, technology, engineering, and math. Those are the top areas right now. They're in sore demand all over the country in a variety of industries, and I'll talk more specifically about what those industries are in a second. Um, this would also include folks who major in the sciences and maybe go out and get uh, certified to teach and go teach their first year out or two, okay? It's another option. Okay. Oh, and by the way, I always like to tell where I'm getting this from. This is from the NACE survey. NACE is the National Association of Colleges and Employers, and they survey every year to get kind of the average starting salaries for each major area and discipline. Okay. So here's the ones we pretty much all know about, right? Medical doctor, veterinarian, pharmacist, dentist, physical therapist, then we see chiropractor, doctor of osteop osteopathy, physician's assistant, and nursing. Okay, these are pretty traditional career paths, right? There may be one or two others that I haven't mentioned, but I didn't want to make the PowerPoint too crazy. Um, but these are the traditional ones in here. And raise your hand if any of you are thinking of one of these careers right now. Most of the room, right? Okay. Then we go into some alternate grad school paths. Straight up biology degrees, straight up chemistry, mixing the two with biochemistry, zoology, wildlife biology, ecology, botany. There's really so many hybrids that we can't even name them all. And I'm going to show you in a second a couple of examples from two different graduate schools in our area. But truly what happens at the graduate level is you begin to see both specialization and sort of cross-pollination, if you want to think of it that way. You begin to see the intersection of different disciplines in certain specialty areas, which can be kind of fascinating. And you may not even be aware that that's a possibility for you at this level. But let's look into some more of them. OK, so this is an example just from UTSA, right down the road in San Antonio. You can go for the straight biology masters. You can also do cellular and molecular at the PhD level or neuro at the PhD level, okay? Then we have a whole other area, biomedical engineering, biotechnology, straight chemistry, environmental science, environmental science engineering. So you see we've got this, these coming together of different disciplines, but also at higher levels where they get a, a much greater specificity. Um, geology is another. I know we have someone interested in that in the back of the room. Um, health and kinesiology, so anyone who's maybe interested in athletics, health, that sort of thing, personal training, etc. Then we have the MBA in the business of health. Did anybody take the business of health class? No? Nobody in this room? I thought we had that class. You, I see one or two in the back. Okay. So those of you who may be really great at managing people and things might consider management in a healthcare field, okay? It's a, a booming industry. We need more and more people. As our baby boomers age, they need medical care. So not only do we need the straight medical professionals and all of the support staff around them, we also need the folks to administer the hospitals and the clinics and the urgent care centers and all of that. Um, Physics, you might not think from biology that we, you would go that route. My father went that route, though. He actually got his master's in medical physics um, and specializes in radiation safety and cancer treatment protocols it, as a hospital administrator, as a matter of fact. Um, and then psychology, too. Uh, I have a dear friend who majored in biology in undergrad and then realized that she really, truly wanted to work more with people in a one-on-one -on -one setting, went and got a master's in psychology and is working on a PhD, wants to be a therapist. So. Um, that's another direction that you might consider as an alternative. Certainly if you go to med school, psychiatry would be a possibility as well. Um, and then public administration, kind of administering more of the, on the governmental role, governmental side of medical issues. Okay, and then, I'm sorry it's so tiny, but I wanted to get them both in there. These are the he two health science centers that I pulled up. And <laughs> even greater specificity here, right? Behavioral sciences, biochem, bioinformatics, biostatistics, cancer biology, developmental biology, genetics and genetic counseling, it's a huge area, immunology, medical physics, which is what my father did. And then we see other things like pathology, pharmacology, physiology, reproductive biology, all the toxicology, virology, very specific pathways. 
Um, and then some of them combine. And you'll see too, is anyone considering occupational therapy? One. Can anybody else in the room even tell me what that is? No, okay, so would you like to tell us what occupational therapy is? Not really? Not really? Oh, come on. Yeah, absolutely. To get them back into their occupation, I mean, if we're going to be very specific about it. But additionally, you can work with all the children all the way to the elderly with occupational therapy. A lot of children with disabilities uh, will see an occupational therapist for assistance with daily living activities. The same with the elderly, the same with you know a, a middle-aged person who maybe has an injury and needs to get back at work, that kind of thing. So um, there, you can work with a wide age range in occupational therapy as in uh, any other branch. Um, but it's, it's a booming field and it's, it's not going to go away as our population ages either. It's another area to think about. Related to physical therapy, but as you said, maybe more specifically related to daily living activities. Okay. Any questions about these? Do I see a stretch or a hand in the back, sir? Stretch? <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to move forward. So. How the heck do we get to these places, right? Certainly, we all know you have to maintain your GPA. That's just a given. Um, however, it's not enough. You need also to get involved in relevant groups, such as the pre-professional health, uh, pre-health profession society. You definitely need to do job shadowing, and some of your uh, grad school tracks will require X number of hours of such activities before you are even eligible to apply. Um, physical therapy in particular. Um, how do you go about getting that? Anybody know? Talk to, professors. Talk to professors. That's one option. What else? That's right. Getting contact info and either emailing or sending a nice letter along with your resume, hopefully, that shows what you're studying and what you hope to accomplish later in life as a professional in that area and that you politely request either, either just an informational interview with them, which it would just be like maybe 15 minutes to half an hour of their time, at which point you could then ask more you know, in depth, possibly about job shadowing. Additionally, it doesn't have to be uh, you know, a stranger that you're contacting from some you know, information online. You can talk to your own doctors and other health professionals um, and see if they are willing to do a job shadow with you or if maybe they know someone who has time to mentor you in that way. Okay, so it doesn't always have to be this uh, rely entirely on your professor uh, to have all of the connections because as much as we like to connect you guys and work with you in that way, we also like to teach you to fish and how to do it yourselves, okay? Because as you move forward, there may not always be one of us here to do it for you, okay? So definitely talk to your professors about it because they may very well know someone who can connect you very easily. But should that not happen or should you just want to take some more initiative on your own, don't hesitate to reach out. You are not going to be the first person nor the last to contact an office and ask to do these kinds of activities because it's a requirement to get into the graduate programs at many of these institutions, okay? Now, internships and part-time jobs. Um, <laughs> certainly, these are important, and I, I put them together because really, an internship is great for credit. Um, it's even better if you get paid for it. <laughs> um, but if you can't or uh, aren't, you know, if you're not able to find that situation, part-time jobs that are related are also very valuable. So for example, if you're considering going to pharmacy school, it would behoove you to maybe get licensed as a pharmacy tech and start working at the Walgreens or the CVS. Would it not? Right? That looks great on an application. You already have experience in the industry. And <laughs> you may very well have a nice recommendation letter from the pharmacist you've been working with. Okay? Um, so there's some strategic reasons to do those. Same thing goes with internships. If you can get in with the right people uh, and you do a good job, you not only build your resume and gain experience and skills, but you hopefully have another person who's a qualified recommender for you for those grad school applications. So 
summer research, especially for those of you who want to go maybe a PhD route, very, very important. Um, if you intend to be a researcher and you've done no research by the time you're applying for those programs, that doesn't look good. So take advantage of every possible opportunity to do summer or research during the year for that matter if there's an opportunity. Get, talk to your professors, um, come and talk to me too. If there are any programs that I know of, I'll be happy to connect you. Um, and I've worked with a couple of folks on their applications for summer research programs. Um, more than happy to help with the resumes and, and personal statements and that sort of thing for that. Um, so it's kind of one of those resources that's not necessarily advertised, but that's available to you all. And in this regard, the early bird gets the worm, in every regard really. But when do you guys start thinking about getting a job for the summer or research or something? Never? <laughs> now. When are the deadlines for these things right now? Yeah, or past, okay? So in this and all things for your future, understand that the graduate schools and or recruiters for jobs are recruiting three to six months before you're naturally gonna even start thinking about it, okay? Their timeline is much uh, more accelerated than yours. So start looking always three to six months before you think you may actually need to be, okay? That's just to be safe. Um, and usually the most prime cuts go the quickest and have the earliest crunch deadlines. Um, the most prestigious institutions, et cetera, have the most stringent deadlines and the earliest. So always try to get ahead of the game in that regard as well. And how do you know about that? You're talking to your advisors, you're talking to me, you're talking to everybody who will listen, okay? Asking questions. Now, Professional associations, you may not yet be eligible to join them, but you should be looking at their websites, you should be looking at their conferences and their publications. If you intend to be a member of that profession later on, you need to be looking and researching and knowledgeable about it now. Why is that? Just because Kim says so? No, right? Why is it? There's a couple of reasons. Possible networking opportunities. Yes, they may have mixers and open, you know, information sessions that you could attend. What else? They may announce scholarship opportunities that you could take advantage of. What else? Oh, y'all are really a snooze fest today. Come on, guys. If you're able to join them, perhaps as a graduate student, what does that look like on your resume? Super fantastic, exactly. What if you're able to go to a conference or even present as a graduate student? Super fantastic as well, okay? When I was in my counseling program at UTSA, I got a little proposal, like, proposal submission accepted for the National Counseling uh, Conference. And I thought, oh, what the heck? This will be good practice. And I submitted a couple of proposals. They both got accepted. Oh my gosh. So I was at the National Conference as a graduate student giving my presentation to full on professional counselors. That looked fantastic on my resume. And it's one of the reasons I'm here. Um, it's, and it was such a wonderful opportunity to, as we said, network and meet other people in the profession. Um, scholarship opportunities were announced on a regular basis, as they will be through other professional associations too. So whether it is pharmaceutical sales or whether it is AMA or the Dental Association, you need to be looking at it. Another thing that it will do is if you're looking at it and you think it's the most boring thing you've ever seen in your life, you need to come talk to me and to your advisor because that's a clue that you might not enjoy that as a professional, okay? Um, these are what your fellow professionals are doing and if you don't get excited about it, that's a clue that we might need to find another direction for you, okay? And it's a clue before you get there and realize, ugh, I don't even like these people, why am I here? That kind of thing, okay? So when you look at it, hopefully at the website of the National Association for whichever direction you're thinking of going, you should get excited about what they're researching, about what the national conference topic is and that sort of thing, okay? All right, this last point is important, especially if you're graduating possibly off season 
or if you don't get into, say, med school or physical therapy school, pharmacy school immediately, and you have to find a backup plan in the interim, uh, temp agencies such as Kelly Services are really good at placing you in lab and tech positions, okay? Um, which is related to what you've studied, which is a full-time employed position, usually. Um, and you're paying some bills, you know, you're putting off the student loan payment possibly, but you're still able to put a roof over your head. Uh, in the meantime, maybe averting moving home with mom and dad. And in the meantime, you're also acquiring experiences related to where you might want to be in the future, and it makes you a more appealing candidate for those graduate schools. Many graduate schools these days, and you guys are one possible exception, but many schools are turning people away unless they've worked for a year or two. So it's something to think about. Um, that if you get into that situation, you need to probably start work immediately so that you have something to build up that resume and to make you a richer candidate the next time around. Okay? And just as an example, a student I worked with previously uh, went through Kelly Services and um, ended up doing uh, testing food specimens for safety uh, purposes. And was it his dream job? Absolutely not. Was it related to his degree? Yes. Was it related to the graduate school he later got into? Yes. Um, and so it made sense. It was kind of a stepping stone. Okay. All righty. Okay. So here again, we see the lab, clinical, pharmacy, x-ray tech, things that we've talked about. Again, they're fairly entry level, but they help you gain valuable experience. I'll use my dad as an example again. He started off as an x-ray tech in the Air Force, uh, commissioned into the Army. They paid for his master's in um, medical physics. So what is medical physics? Does anyone know? What do you think it is? <laughs> Man, I really do it all the talking today. Come on, guys. Who's ever had? Yes, in the back, sir. Uh, does it have something to do with like, radiology? Yes. Yes, it absolutely does. So he's not the radiologist. He doesn't have the medical degree, but he works with them. He ensures state compliance, that no one's being overly irradiated, which is very important. We want to know that, right? He also does the complex calculations for all of the machinery that delivers doses for uh, treatments. So not only is he supervising all the x-ray techs and all that kind of thing, making sure they're not getting overdosed with radiation, He's uh, working with state regulators. He's working with VPs in the hospital of the administration, making sure that the whole Methodist healthcare system is in compliance with state and national regulations. Additionally, he's doing hazmat stuff too. So like anytime there's a city or county uh, exercise on a dirty bomb going off, he's there kind of making sure that the Methodist healthcare folks are practicing being ready to receive people in these sort of disaster situations. So it's kind of cool. Um, it's the science administration side of hospital uh, administration. So he loves it. He had a 20-year career in the military uh, at Bamsey, retired from that, um, and has had, gosh, almost now another 20 years career as a civilian in, in hospital administration. And he went the medical physics route. He works with doctors. He also got, gets to suit up sometimes when they deliver uh, radioactive little seeds to be planted inside of people's tumors, which is kind of interesting um, for treatment and that sort of thing. There's a lot of cutting edge neat stuff happening uh, that you can be involved in in that way. Um, medical device and pharmaceutical sales may not be anybody's first option in here, but they want science majors who know how to speak the language and speak to doctors and nurses about their different products, and whether it's a drug or it's you know, a breathing therapy. Um, there are some companies in San Antonio, like Medtronic, which is all about diabetes products and uh, services delivery. As you may already know, <laughs> South Texas has a huge problem with diabetes. Um, and so there's a huge market for that here. Um, pharmaceutical sales is pretty much all over the country. We also have in San Antonio the headquarters of KCI. Has anybody heard of them? Yeah? What do they do? They do. They were the first folks to patent a bed that rotates for patients who are immobilized, so to move, get them some movement. Uh, additionally, they currently hold two patents on artificial skin for wound care. Uh, which is pretty amazing. Uh, and they also hold one or two patents on some breathing assistive therapies, which is pretty neat. Um, 
And there, they have offices all over the world, so you could technically work for them, do R&D. Uh, you could work for them as a doctor or a nurse as well in clinical operations and trials. Um, so that's definitely a possibility. Personal training. I mean, those of you who are athletes in the room, this may kind of be a no-brainer. But if you needed to supplement income, even while you're going through a graduate program, this would be a good option for you. And certainly in line with some of the areas that you might want to practice, either medicine or physical therapy and that kind of thing. Looks good on the resume, et cetera. Nutrition. Uh, as I mentioned, South Texas, our diabetes issue, we also have a huge problem with obesity, it's actually nationwide now. Um, nutrition is a huge, huge growth area. Um, you can work with lower socioeconomic populations who are struggling like through a program like WIC, Women, Infant, Infants, and Children, uh, at the entry level. And then you can hang your own shingle or work for a hospital or in a, perhaps a weight loss clinic or that kind of uh, environment too to help folks. The diabetes clinics also often employ uh, nutritionists, et cetera. Um, we talked kind of about healthcare and hospital administration already. Um, oftentimes, the, the current upper level folks in VP positions, um, at least I'll speak only to Methodist, um, are often MBAs because maybe the healthcare administration program wasn't in existence yet when they went through the ranks. But you guys now have the opportunity to take advantage of those kinds of more specific MBA programs if you're interested. So they give you more of the knowledge of the specific administration of a hospital rather than just a blanket MBA program. So. Counseling and psychology. Um, if you decide, uh, I have a friend who was med school bound and uh, her GPA was just not quite as high as it needed to be. She was doing some work uh, as a lab tech and decided she didn't really like the lab and wanted to be out and more with people and helping people more directly and did some research and she also got married <laughs> during that time and decided that she her priorities had changed. She went for a two years master's in counseling and is currently seeing clients in private practice, loves it. So it's not necessarily the route she thought she'd be taking when she was where you guys are, but she's very happy and satisfied with it and her biology degree has helped her get that too. Um, education, oh my goodness, science and math are huge needs areas uh, in our education system, whether it's K through 12 or if you want to go on and uh, teach at the community college or university level, very, very high needs areas. We don't have enough people definitely at the K through 12 area in going into these certification specialty areas. So if you were to do so, even if it's a backup plan, it's a very good backup plan. Uh, starting salaries uh, are probably around 38, so maybe a little bit below that average uh, that I showed you earlier, uh, but certainly that's nothing to sneeze at and would put a roof over your head and enable you to pad your resume and figure out kind of what you wanted to do from there, okay? Um, and you might discover you have a passion for teaching, you just never know. Okay, questions, comments? Anybody tell me what occupational therapy is except this gentleman up here? No one? He's going to be very upset you didn't pay attention to what he said. <laughs> social skills? Not social skills. Well, it, if you're working with... Yes. Yes, so activities of daily living. Absolutely. There we go. Okay. Now completely different tracks that you probably haven't thought of. Medical illustrator. If anyone in here is into art, or digital design, that is definitely something you could consider. Technical writer, someone has to write all those directions for all of the procedures and processes, right? Grant writing too would be in here. I didn't mention that in particular, but it is a, it's certainly a, a technical area. Um, test and textbook editing. Generally, they like to see folks who've been a teacher for a year or two first, at least, so maybe teacher certification and then test or textbook editing. Um, I have a friend who did test editing um, kind of as a contractor. She was raising four children, <laughs> small children, and homeschooling them. And ETS would send her every day, um, we need you to write X, Y, and Z test questions. And she'd write test questions and she'd email them back if she had time. 
And if they liked the question, they were, she got paid for it. If they didn't like the question, she didn't. If she didn't have time to respond, she didn't have to. That's a pretty sweet deal. So if you guys are ever in need of some extra income on kind of a catch-as-catch-can basis, it's something that we don't really know is widely available, but it's there. Um, let's see. Science and medical publishing, of course, either online or in, in print. Nonprofit agencies. I like to mention Girls, Inc. in particular. Is anybody familiar with this, uh, this agency? No? They're a national organization with local branches, and there's one in San Antonio, and they conduct extensive summer camps. They're particularly focused on empowering young women to be strong, smart, and bold. And because young women are underrepresented in the sciences, they have a lot of science, math, and technology summer programming that they put on. So if you like working with young people and you think you might enjoy that as a summer activity, consider that as a resume pad and something to see if maybe the education path might not be something that would be interesting to you, or nonprofit as well, okay? Because then there are other nonprofits too, such as what? That are medical related. Hello, American Cancer Society, <laughs> Diabetes Association, any disease, that, leukemia, lymphoma, cystic fibrosis, all of the major illnesses that we are currently working to either eradicate or cure, uh, there's a professional, or I'm sorry, there's a nonprofit association working to do that, doing fundraising, helping grant people uh, research grants and th these th such things, raising awareness, marketing campaigns, all of that. So it's something that may not be a direct link to what you're doing, but there's definitely a need for uh, folks with your level of knowledge and skill in this area in, in these agencies. Um, <laughs> park ranger and forester, if you love the outdoors and you want to put your degree to work in uh, something that's a little more adventurous and outside the box, something to think about. Conservationist, similar. Lobbyist, who knows what lobbyists do? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, enactment of laws that would benefit certain groups or um, help improve society in some way, absolutely. And so, does the American Medical Association employ lobbyists? They absolutely do. Uh, do those lobbyists often have both medical and law degrees? Yeah. So that's something, I, when I was in law school, I sat next to my first year a gentleman who was a medical doctor, who was probably 20 years my senior. And I thought, why is he here? Well, he was there because he wanted to go and defend his fellow doctors in malpractice suits. That's what he wanted to do. That's another area that you could consider. If you really are a glutton for punishment and want both a medical degree and a law degree, go for it. I'm, I'm one of those people that will probably always have alphabet soup after my name, so I understand that. Um, and I encourage, if you are in love with learning and really think that you uh, would enjoy being an advocate for fellow, fellow uh, medical or other professionals, it's something to think about. Uh, so it's definitely the political side of influencing policy and such for certain issues. Also, you know, think about stem cell research, right? It's a little bit controversial. Are there lobbyists trying to pass legislation to make it okay or to promote it? Are there lobbyists also working to not make it go forward? Yes. So every political issue that you can think of that has a medical impact, there are lobbyists working on both sides of that issue, okay? Federal, state, local, government, and even NGOs. Does anybody know what NGOs are? Non-governmental organizations, yes. Um, a friend of mine works in Washington, D.C. for, oh, I'm blanking on the name of the organization, I'm sorry. Um, but it's an international conservation association that does a lot of work on uh, conserving wild areas uh, on the continent of Africa. She gets to travel to Africa once a year and see the beautiful flora and fauna of Africa and work daily to protect it back here in the States. So she raises money, she raises awareness. It's a pretty cool deal. Yes. Oh, do I see a hand back there? Oh, gosh, kicking and screaming, you guys. OK, um, so there are all kinds of NGOs. Um, the Red Cross. Right? Would, would even count as a nonprofit, non governmental organization that goes abroad. Doctors Without Borders, all these kinds of associations that do charitable work um, all over the world. Okay? 
Uh, federal, state, and local employment. Just the other day, I was pulling up usajobs.gov, and this is a site that you guys should probably be familiar with, because someone was saying to me, I'm not sure if I want to go directly to medical school. I'm not positive that I'm 100% committed to it. So what are my options if I want to go straight to work? Well, I said, the federal government is hiring like crazy, and let's just see. So we went to usajobs.gov, we typed in chemist, or biology, microbiology, I think it was, and um, like 70 jobs pop up. So we narrowed it then to Texas, and there were like 20. Lab tech, uh, chemical tech, that sort of thing. Now, you might be working on a military base, right? But you're not in the military, you're not in uniform, and you're not you know, uh, signed up to go off to war or anything like that. So working for the federal government doesn't necessarily mean that you are in the military, okay? Um, but they're pretty cushy jobs, they get great vacation, they'll be off on Monday when we're all sitting here, <laughs> okay? Um, so it's kind of a nice deal. The retirement package are, packages are great, and if you work for one federal agency, you, have, you get, um, preference, they call it, if you apply for other federal jobs. So that's kind of nice. Um, you could start off working for the Social Security Administration or the Veterans Administration, always needs folks with hospital-related uh, administration and that kind of thing, healthcare issues. Um, and then you could transfer to the CDC and have preference, okay? Preference is very nice. It's an advantage over other applicants. You want preference if you decide to do those things. Um, state and local, you know, uh, tech, state of Texas, different agencies, wildlife agencies, um, hunting and fishing and that kind of thing, if you're into those things, might be something you could consider. Um, and then local even, sometimes the city of San Antonio or city of Seguin may employ you to do, you know, testing and that kind of thing for different uh, things. That reminds me too, SAWS, the San Antonio Water System, likes to employ chemists and biologists um, to uh, test water quality and, and uh, look at different projects and that sort of thing, geologists as well. So, any questions about those? Any others that you may have heard of that you're not sure what they are or want to ask me about? You guys just, yes. Yes. Yeah, dentists, dentists also can go, I mean, you can do it in a couple of different ways. You can do it through a church organization, um, but there are definitely professional organizations for all of these professions. Optometrists as well that go and do eye examinations and take eyeglasses and that sort of thing. So yes, those do exist in pretty much every one of these uh, professions that we're speaking about. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they're really great. My, my personal GP did Doctors Without Borders to Russia several times and was so impacted by what she saw there that she ended up going back to adopt two Russian children. And it's, it's just an interesting side note that you know, never know how life's gonna, gonna take things. But uh, anyhow, questions, comments? No, okay. So here's the thing. <laughs> a lot of times you guys will think, I'm getting a biology degree or I'm getting a chemistry degree and I have to go to medical school. No, you do not. Or I have to go do one of those very you know, prominent uh, professional school tracks. No, you do not. If you choose to, that's fantastic and we're all here to help you get there. If you don't make it the first try, don't get discouraged. Not everyone does. Try, try again and we will help you do it another way, okay? If you decide that none of those traditional tracks is for you, more power to you, and there's many others to choose from, okay? So, although in years past, we may have had the idea that if we majored in biology, we were going to be a doctor, or if we majored in political science, we were going to be an attorney. The reality is that the, from these basic undergraduate degrees, so many different branches come from that base root, okay? This is just the very foundation of what you will do with your degrees. Some of you may take it into areas that don't even exist right now, okay? That's just, such as our science and technology, that's how it is. Um, kind of an example from another field, social media marketing specialist came through my computer this morning to, to add to Jobs for Bulldogs. That didn't exist five years ago, or you know, that didn't exist when I was in school. The same thing is certainly true of technology, science, math, and engineering, okay? So there will be things that you guys are able to accomplish professionally that we never even imagined, okay? Any questions? Yes. 
Well, certainly med school, right? Uh, so you would need to get the medical degree. And then there are, correct me if I'm wrong, gentlemen, are there not specializations that you can do in forensics later on? Yeah, yeah. Correct. I believe I believe there there are there's definitely um, even I mean even in other fields forensics is kind of its whole separate area you can do forensic accounting you can do forensic psychology um, so you know you would want to pursue pathology through medical school and certainly do your residence there and then consider if there's a professional association of forensic pathologists which I'm certain there is start looking at that that's another uh, uh, strategy to employ look at where you want to be and work backwards yes. Yes. There are, and we showed we showed a couple of them too, at, at, even in the state of Texas. So um, that's a possibility as well. Depending, I mean, do you want to be the person doing the autopsy? <laughs> that needs to be the pathologist. Do you want to be the person, you know, in the lab working with the pathologist? Maybe just a forensics degree. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so you have to maintain your GPA, and uh, I'm sure all the students here did that, but there are some <laughs> others that I know of who didn't. And what do you say to you? Like they come out, they finish their, you know, maybe a 2.5 GPA or something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and <sighs> that's a tough situation to be in, and especially if it doesn't happen till right towards the end and it's kind of crushing and you're still kind of grieving that uh, dream, um, come and see me because that's part of the reason that I have a counseling degree is to help you get over that. Because you do have to sort of, <laughs> it, it's true, <laughs> yeah. You do have to sort of get over the idea that Harvard Med is going to let you in. Um, that's, that's not going to happen, at least not right, up, right from undergrad. Um, <laughs> That's just the, I'm here, I'm here to give the reality check, I'm sorry. But uh, there are many other options. I guarantee you my father had that kind of GPA when he graduated from undergrad, and he's now <laughs> a hospital administrator over the whole Methodist healthcare system. He's making good money, he's perfectly happy with where he is. Um, so there are 10 different ways till Tuesday to accomplish a similar goal. It may not be the exact same thing, you may not have the same title, um, but you can still love what you're doing. So that is an instance where you should come and see me once you have that realization that, oh, this is probably not going to happen, and we'll do some assessments. We'll talk about your personality and what other tracks might be a better fit, because perhaps this is the, the hand of God telling you, go this way, go this way. You're gonna do wonderful things off this way that you haven't even considered, okay? Um, I fully believe that we all have our place in the world and sometimes we find it by failing at something, okay? Sometimes that is the best possible thing that can happen to us, is not to get what we're praying for, okay? So if in, if the, in fact that happens to you, Cry about it for a minute and then get over it and come see us, okay? Come see me, come see your advisor, and talk to us about alternative options. I've listed several, um, and you do have to have that cry. You just have to have that disappointment for a minute because if you carry that on to the next phase of what you're doing, you're going to have this, like, grumpy grouch face and, and be acting like it's second choice and they're going to be offended and you're not going to get that either. So you have to kind of grieve it and set it aside and then realize that that door closed, there are probably 10 others that are still open, okay? Um, it, it, they're different for each person, so it's sort of hard to directly answer the question, but there are always, there are always, always options. Additionally, I have been working with an alumna who graduated several years ago, wanted to go to med school, did not get in, um, really, truly struggled academically. Um, went and got a master's in biology at another institution in the area, applied for pharmacy school, and has an interview next Friday at the UT School of Pharmacy. Okay? Did it take her several more years than she'd hoped to get into a medical-related field professionally? Yes. Is she quite there yet? No, but she's got the door open, right? She had to do some somersaults and, and cartwheels and gymnastics to get into it, um, but she found an opportunity and she didn't quit is the point. She didn't 
take it as a defeat and just give, throw up her hands and say, oh, I'm never going to do anything medical related. Okay? It's not what she thought initially, but it's still going to be a very uh, wonderful career choice for her, hopefully. And she'll be a great pharmacist, I think. Okay? Yes? You probably need to go talk to the, the medical center like immediately. I'm sure there are always opportunities. Um, one of our recent graduates was an EMT also and uh, did that while he was in school. So I'm, I'm positive that he was over here at the medical center. So um, yeah, go and talk to the human resources department at the hospital and they'll get you in. Um, gentlemen, you don't have a connect, direct connect to that, do you? I, I don't either. I don't know who that person is, but we can certainly help you with the application process and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I didn't mention EMT, but that's great for the resume. Goodness gracious, that screams trauma medicine <laughs> all over it. ER doc, that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, I want to back up uh, some, some, some things you said uh, sure. a little while ago about, you know, we come up with these ideas, we want to be such and such and here, and then our uh, ideas change and mm -hmm. whatnot. But you've listed uh, quite a few that are some of our own graduates have gone into life. Yes. Mm -hmm. For example, there's a master's program at Incarnate Word mm -hmm. that one of our students graduated. She works now in a hospital system in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. We have a hospital administrator here in Sedini mm -hmm. who has a Bachelor of Science in, in Biology here. Um, somebody teaches in high school here who is a mm -hmm. biology graduate. Yeah. A lot of different opportunities, and they may not have thought of these right at the beginning, but as their thinking process has went on. That's right. And, and things change, too. Um, so I gave the example of my friend who, uh, you know, got married kind of in the middle of her process and her priorities changed. She realized, I kind of do want to have a family right now. And that's not necessarily the most popular choice, but that was important to her. And if that is an important thing to you, you need to be honest with yourself about that too. Because if you're going to go all the way through medical school, that's not very feasible in the short term. Okay? So it's not, then there's no shame in that. Um, you can go to med school later. You can be in an alternate career. You don't have to necessarily be the MD. Uh, but uh, you need to n kind of know yourself and understand that about yourself. What are your values? What do you want your life to look like? And realistically, not from, you know, Grey's Anatomy and, <laughs> you know, what it looks like on TV. Uh, those are not realistic expectations. Um, Yes, exactly. Yeah, is to get a real taste. And I mean, the best case scenario, you go job shadow or do an internship and you love it. The worst case, you realize, oh my gosh, I hate this. I don't want to, I definitely don't want to do this specialty area. Or maybe I don't want to be a doctor at all. I talked to someone last night at our senior mixer who came in pre med, was just certain she wanted to be a medical doctor, went and did a job shadowing experience and realized, Oh no, I, I don't like blood. So <laughs> that's an issue. So she recalibrated and is now doing kind of psychology sociology and she's going to be great at it. So um, sometimes we discover too along the way that our preconceptions are wrong and we reevaluate those. We get to know ourselves better both in our skills, our interests, and our values and decide kind of from there what that needs to look like. And this is not a finished process today or at graduation. This is a lifelong process and these skills and strategies will serve you your whole life if you start to employ them now and get the practice in. Um, you may go off and be a medical doctor like the gentleman who sat next to me in law school and decide mid-career, wait a minute, I'm passionate about being an advocate for my fellow doctors and go and do some whole other degree that, you know, right now you're like, that's craziness. I just want to get through my undergrad and get to grad school. But you never know. You really never know. Okay. Talk about a double threat, too. That gentleman is very gainfully employed right now. So that's good news, too, is that the salaries in your areas, in all of them, are very livable wages, if not very highly above the national averages. So good news, too. Any, Any questions? Probably in February of 
last uh -huh. year uh -huh. on resumes and write and interview processes and things like this. Some of you may have heard that. And that's videotaped somewhere. Right? It's available, I believe, on the TLU YouTube channel. It's posted there, as this will be also. So, okay. Uh, yes, it will. So please uh, take uh, advantage of those opportunities. Uh, see her video from last year. Come talk with her. Talk about careers. Uh, she has excellent ideas to uh, help kind of maybe guide you along, push you along, something like that. So let's thank Ms. Watt. Thank you guys so much. My pleasure. Students at TLU engage in high-impact educational experiences that include civic engagement, aesthetic expression, critical thinking, and a focus on intercultural knowledge in a community that welcomes the interplay of faith and reason.